Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, and welcome to Kenna Metals Military Recruitment Webinar. My name is Debbie Arnold, and I'm joined today by Hubert Janowski, Digital Recruitment Manager, and Jim Stanko, Senior Staff Engineer. Uh, we appreciate everyone's attendance to today's call and hope you all get some great information about Kenna Metal and Kenna Metal's commitment to our military and veterans. The webinar will last approximately 30 minutes, and we will have time at the end for Q&A. Um, this call is being recorded, uh, so without further ado, I'd like to now hand over the call to Jim Stanko. Jim? Oh, thank you, Deb, and thank all of you for taking time out of your busy schedule today to attend this webinar. I'd like to also thank you for your service to our country in one of the five branches of our armed forces. It's truly an honor and privilege to speak with you today and tell you a little bit about the great company I work for, Kenametal, and my military and Kenametal career. So you may ask, who is Kenametal? You may not know who Kenametal is, but we touch the lives, live, your lives in many ways. We make tooling and wear resistance solutions which shape your world. In the aerospace, Kenametal supplies solutions to companies like Boeing, Pratt & Whitney, and General Electric to help make the turbine blades and other jet engine parts and various parts of the, of the aircraft. In transportation, we supply manufacturing solutions for automobiles, trucks, and trains. This includes machining the wheels that go on the trains, and machining railroad tracks, to name a few. In general engineering, we supply solutions which make the, com which the, can make the companies manufacture items for consumer, industrial applications, commercial business to help them be more productive. In earthworks, we supply tooling which planes the roads we drive on, the solutions for snowplow blades, and help companies such as Caterpillar and John Deere service their customers. In the energy segment, we work to find solutions to manufacture and extend the life of pumps, pipelines used in gas and oil exploration, along with manufacturing wind turbines and hydroelectric turbines. Innovation and finding, innovation and finding a better solution, solution which solves our customers' manufacturing challenges is at the heart of who we are. So let's take a little bit of glance at what Canmel is today. So Kenmel has over 11,000 employees around the world. We generate about $2.1 billion in revenue. We have over 80,000 customers. We're represented in over 60 countries, and we have 1,500 active patents at this time. Our world headquarters is located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Our European headquarters is located in Neuhausen, Switzerland. Our Indian headquarters is in Bangalore, India, and our Asia Pacific is in Singapore, Singapore. Let's talk a bit about Kenamel's history. Kenamel was founded in 1938 under the name McKenna Metals in Latrobe, PA. Metallurgist Philip McKenna created a tungsten titanium carboid alloy for cutting tools. He worked for a local steel manufacturing company and patented his idea. Being a steel company, they didn't understand the breakthrough idea he came up with, so he went out and founded McKenna Metals in a garage in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. His first year of business, the company had 12 employees and sales of $30,000. Then came along World War II. As American manufacturing geared up to support the war effort of manufacturing tanks, planes, weapons, ships, and other needed items, these companies needed a way to increase productivity, machine materials faster and, fun and better, and thus the growth of the company increased. Annual sales then approached $10 million, and employment was up to nearly 900 people, as the company tools were, tools were used extensively in the wartime economy. In 1943, Kenamel became a legal corporation under the name Kenamel Incorporated. In 1967, an initial public offering on the New York Stock Exchange was made. In 1980, we saw our first year of $300 million in annual sales. In 1993, we acquired our competitor, a German toolmaker named Hertel AG. In 1996, we exceeded $1 billion in annual sales. In 2002, Kenamel acquired Vidya, another competitor of ours, and increased our portfolio and is a very important part of our corporation now. In 2005, we exceeded $2 billion in annual sales. In 2006, we opened factories in Brazil and India, Tuba, and in Tianjin, China. In 2013, we acquired the company Tungsten Materials from ATI, and our, con our company continues to grow today. Various awards and recognition, we are uh, awarded world's most ethical companies, Bosch Supplier Award, Boeing Supplier Performance and Excellence Award, 
America's Safest Companies, the CIO 100 Award, and MSC Supplier of the Year. Many of our local uh, factories have received uh, various awards at the local level and other awards at the corporate level. So, I want to talk a little bit about my, mil my military career. I was proud to serve in the United States Air Force from July 1980 to 1984. The picture on the left is everybody's favorite picture, your basic training photo, and that's me with my bus driver hat. The picture on the right is me receiving my Air Force Accommodation Medal from Colonel Bentley at Eglin Air Force Base in 1984. In the summer of 1979, I was between my junior and senior year of high school. At the time, I, I knew I didn't want to go to college, and I started considering other options, including the military. I was working as a grocery clerk at the local Kroger's when one of the air guys mentioned they, talk, they were talking with the Air Force recruiter. I was always interested in aviation and airplanes, so I met with the recruiter and took the ASVAB test and scored high in all co categories, including electronics. I always did well in science and math, and I said, thought to myself, why not? I joined the United States Air Force and delayed enlistment in August of 1979, part of my senior year in high school. I graduated in June, and on July 17th, a blue sedan pulled in to drive my own parents' house at 5 a.m. and took me to Pittsburgh for processing to be sworn into the Air Force. I was at Lackland Air Force Base for basic training from July through August. What a great idea. Go to basic training in Texas during the hottest part of the summer, July and August. Waking up at 90 degrees, temperatures to go run PT and march the rest of the day. I then transferred to Keesler Air Force Base to attend avionics communications school. I spent six months in avionics communications specialist training, learned how to troubleshoot and repair aircraft radios, intercoms, and air electronics. I got my orders to Han Air Base, and I thought, where in the United States is Han Air Base? I found out I was headed to Germany for two years. I actually arrived at Han Air Base the day that President Reagan was shot in March of 1981. During this time at Han Air Base, I was promoted from E2 to E4, and part of that was a below-the-zone promotion to start my training to become an NCO. I was a member of the 50th Aircraft Generation Squadron for the 10th Tactical Fighter Wing. We became known as the Blue Zoo. We got that name because of a toga party in Insulik, Turkey, right after the Syrians attempted to shoot down two Navy F-14 Tomcats, NATO Tacavel. It was kind of a wild party, and that's a story for another time. I worked on F-4E Phantom aircraft as a communications navigation system specialist and achieved my five-level status. I worked all three ships at the squadron, was one of the youngest three specialists who arrived within a short period of time. I soon became proficient enough to start to handle mo most of the more difficult troubleshooting tests. I also started assisting other shops with jet engine removals and installation, hydraulic repairs, and being cross-trained as a crew chief. The base transitioned to F-16, fighting Falcons in the summer of 81, and I soon became a calm, nav, and electronic warfare tech. We were the first United States Air Force base in Europe with F-16s. When this happened, many of the more seasoned specialists and crew chiefs were rotated out of Germany back to the United States. Thus, many of the younger troops were now the senior specialists and supervisors remaining new recruits just graduating from tech school, with these folks only having six to eight weeks worth of training compared to our six months to a year. Imagine new airframe, new systems to learn, a group of airmen with little to no training on how to perform basic troubleshooting of electronic systems. This required a lot of long hours and a lot of effort to bring these people up to speed and keep the squadron at the highest state of readiness. In order to accomplish this, we pulled together as a team. We came to work, in, came to work on off shifts and also weekends to help each other out. I supervised second shift for the specialist team, which had 40 people. I trained over 16 level 3 technicians to the level 5 status. I had multiple deployments throughout Europe and the Middle East, Turkey, Spain, Denmark, Great Britain, and various bases in Germany to show off our new aircraft. On a deployment to Zaragoza, Spain, I was a crew chief for our B model F-16, which is our two-seater version. And Major General Brown, the commander of 7th Air Force, he was trying to qualify in the F-16 at the time. During the deployment, the general, general had several issues with his plane that I was able to handle quickly, and he was surprised that a specialist was his crew chief and started asking around about me. He soon found out I'd be going back to the States in, in March. A request, a request had been made to his staff to find a qualified sea shop tech to send to Eagle Air Force Base in Fort Walton Beach, Florida, to support the R&D Division for Electronic Warfare Development. 
He talked with the squadron commander, maintenance commander, many senior NCOs on the base, and they recommended me for the assignment. I had no clue all this was going on when I received my orders. And so I saw that I was transferring Eglin. I thought, Eglin, it's a TAC base. They have F-15s. Why am I going there? Soon after, our maintenance colonel, Colonel Cole, commander, told me about General Brown and needed to send, send someone to go to Eglin to help out. I arrived in Eglin on March of 1983 to the, to the 100th AMS Squadron. I supported R&D effort, efforts for electronic warfare systems on F-16s. F-15s, in fact, we had some of the first F-15 Strike Eagles at that time, A-10 Warthogs, the old F-4, and EF-111s. I achieved uh, E-5 rank, Staff Sergeant Wild Eglin, and tested for E-6 and had a line number for promotion prior to separation. When I arrived, the chief of the shop said to me, so you're the hot shot out of Europe who's supposed to help me out. I said, I, the only thing I could say, sure. When I arrived, all six F-16s that were there we're not able to support the R&D missions required. Each of the aircraft in the R&D division were heavily modified. You opened the avionics base and, saw, base and saw nothing but orange boxes. All these systems were one of a kind from various companies, which I had not seen before since these were development systems. On top of that, I had a staff of young techs fresh out of training with no skills. It was Han all over again. Once again, long hours and a lot of work. Within two weeks, all six airframes were back online. Never miss, missed a mission while I was there. I was the second shift supervisor and trained over 20 techs at Eglin. During my time at Eglin, I started thinking about what I was going to do next. I'd work with representatives from General Dynamics who had college degrees but had, had no clue how to troubleshoot or fix an F-16, let alone electronics backgrounds. And they were being paid a lot more money compared to me. I decided I wanted to be an engineer. There are many times I questioned why an engineer would ever place an LRU, line replaceable unit, in an aircraft, where you literally had to stand on your head to remove it and replace the item. I would be a better engineer for these folks. I would design stuff that I had to either work on or I had to operate. And keeping in mind that I had to do that, I would make it simple. I start looking at the evening classes at the local college to pursue my electrical engineering degree. When I approached my chief about attending college, he denied my request. He told me that the plan was to keep me in Eglin for three more years. He told me I was a lifer. I had a nice re-enlistment re bonus away to me, and my promotion E6 was sometime in August. When I told him that I would not re-enlist re unless he approved my request to attend college courses in the evening, he laughed. It wasn't until 72 hours before I separated, he realized I was serious and he begged me to stop. So. My transition to civilian life was pretty seamless. I had a plan. I moved back with my parents, found a part-time job, and a school to attend, and used my GI benefits to help pay for school. From separation to employment was 11 months. I was not act actively looking for a job when Canamel job opened up. On, my, on the left is my wonderful wife, Sandy, of 27 years, and we're standing in front of the Cleveland sign with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in the background. On the right are my oldest daughter, Caitlin, her husband, Mike. Holding Jax, our Yorkie, is my daughter, Nicole. Jax the Yorkie, he loves to ride around Northeast Ohio in our 03 Mustang GT convertible during the summer, feeling the breeze blow through his hair and across his face. It's hard to believe that 32 years have passed, since, passed by since I started with Kenmo. Like I was saying, prior to going, joining Kenmo, I was attending Penn Technical Institute in Pittsburgh to get my associate's degree in electronics technology. While I was there, the position opened at Kenmo for electrical technician. I found, out, I found out about the position from my father and a neighbor. Kenmo was one of the smaller companies in Latrobe. At the time, specialty steel production was the main source of employment. In fact, there was over five steel mills in Latrobe at that time. Kenmo was known as a stable company, known for employees with long-term careers. I was hired in June of 1985. I was told that they interviewed five candidates, I was their second choice. The first choice was an Army specialist who spent 12 years experience maintaining surface-to-air missile systems. Well, he decided to take a job with Volkswagen in western Pennsylvania, and I got my foot in the door and haven't looked back since. Since I was still attending school, Kenmo paid for my last semester at Penn Technical while I attended evening classes. My first position was electrical technician in manufacturing systems. 
my first week on the job, two days after I got employed, my boss goes on vacation. He tells me there's a horrible grinder which needs to be debugged and shipped by Friday. I started my new job on Monday. I was able to debug the system, have it ready for shipment by Friday, much to the surprise of my new boss. I then worked on vision inspection equipment, grinders, edge preparation systems, various automation projects. And I always work with my boss to ask for more to do. He always stood by me, gave me the support I needed, let me take on the challenges, give me enough rope that I wouldn't hang myself. So I learned how to design electrical control systems, NC controls, program pro programmable logic controllers, and various other systems, including robots. I was promoted to associate engineer in December 1996. I continued to work with manufacturing systems and then got transferred to the Coatings Technology Group where I learned about chemical vapor deposition equipment, physical vapor deposition, deposition equipment, and I was transferred to Coatings Group because they needed someone who could program PLCs and with help constructing a large number of reactors in a short period of time. Dur during this time, I was attending evening and Saturday classes from electrical engineering technology degree at Point Park University in Pittsburgh. In April 1990, I was promoted to engineer. I've soon, within that, within about a four-year period, of, I was attained senior engineer. I work in the carbide process development group, coatings technology group, manufacturing systems. In April 1990, I got married. I returned to work after our honeymoon and found out I was transferred to carbide process development. There was a large project called Centering Standardization. This involved it upgrading 70 plus centering furnaces around the world, either brand new equipment or retrofit, retrofitting current units. When I arrived from my first meeting with the team, they were all falling behind schedule and it was taking four to six weeks to bring a furnace back online once they started. After a couple of weeks, my first uh, install being completed, I noticed a couple improvements which could speed up the process. Most of the team members, were more seasoned employees. I was merely 28 at the time. They were in their 40s and 50s. I suggested to the team we build a gas delivery system and a water delivery system since the previous process was to build those on site from scratch. And I also noticed that the technician who did the software for the furnaces developed new code for each system. I mentioned to the team we get these gas systems in, water systems in, and having pre-built prior to starting, that would take a lot of time off the schedule. I also took over programming the controls of the system to develop code, which will allow one software package to control four different configurations of centering furnaces. Within three months, I was named project manager, and during the time frame, we reduced the installation time to 10 days. And within a short period of time, it was down to five days with further improvements in training of an outside firm to handle mechanical assembly and subsystems. Prior to that, we utilized the maintenance teams, and other members of the staff at corporate, once I got the outside firm trained on how to do the retrofits, they were able to go in there and complete the complete job within five days with me supporting them. I also got involved in a lot of our projects, supporting our refinery in Fallon, Nevada, where we make powder at, our powder processing plant in North Carolina, and development of new technologies for processing ceramic materials along with pressing technology. In the spring of 1996, an announcement was made that a new factory was being installed in Shanghai, China. The factory would process cutting tools and include a CBD department. I thought to myself, there's only one person with experience in CBD at corporate headquarters in regards to building and installing these systems, and this was me. When I took over the project, the expected ship date for the equipment was August of 1997. Within three weeks, the Chinese government announced incentives to reduce the tariffs that the equipment could be in port in Shanghai by December 1996, basically eight months ahead of schedule. The issue was that most of the components had not yet been procured and some of the lead times were seven to eight months. I quickly assembled my team, working with our vendors and suppliers. We were able to reduce the lead time and have all four systems ready to ship by October. Factory construction had not yet been started until the spring of 1997 and would not be ready for equipment until September. Thus, all equipment went into storage until the factory was ready. Between October 1997 and January 1998, I spent many weeks in Shanghai helping out with the construction of the facility, necessary support equipment, and installation of the equipment itself, and the eventual startup of the department and training of the personnel. This project was, when this project was completed, I was transferred back to Manufacturing Systems Department in 1998 to support development of robot pick and place systems, packaging line for our cutting tools 
and many other projects. I was promoted to staff engineer in April 2003, stayed with manufacturing systems until through 2006. During this time, I was in centering standardization and CVD. I could not attend school prior to the time because I was on the road. And when I went to go back, I had four credits, I thought, left to get my electrical engineering technology degree. But I found out that actually the curriculum had been changed, requirements had been changed. I was back to starting my junior year out again. In discussions with my management team and, and the college, we came up with a solution. I eventually earned a bachelor's in business management and an MBA in 32 months. In the fall of 2006, a colleague of mine was the plant manager of Seoul, Ohio facility where I'm currently at. He was looking for an engineering manager who was hands-on and could help transform the factory. So De December 2006, 2000, you know, 2006 through April 2017, I managed the manufacturing engineering department, processing department, maintenance, and C programming, which had 33 people in it. When I first arrived at Soling, I had a flashback to my first night of basic training. What did I get myself into? This was a totally different part of the business. I'd worked on carbine and ceramic side of the business for 22 years. Now I had to learn how to manufacture steel products. I spent the first couple of weeks talking to team members on the floor and asking questions, learning their names, and the process they're performing. I relied on my staff of engineers, programmers, processors, maintenance technicians to fill in some of the blanks. The maintenance technicians soon learned that I was a former maintenance person and understood what it, was, what it took to do their job and the challenges they faced. In fact, I spent many hours out on the shop floor with my elbows and hands inside of a machine helping them troubleshoot and fix the machine. In a short period, period of time, I had a good understanding of the operation, start making suggestions, and develop plans for needed changes. I was also the quality assurance manager for seven months during my time period, along with all my other responsibilities. Kenmel continued to support my development as I, earned, as I earned a black belt in Six Sigma and lean from Kent State University. Earlier this year, Kenmel announced that they were investing a large lot amount of money in a modernization automation of their manufacturing plants. An engineering position was posted internally to support these efforts. I talked with the plant manager here at Solon along with other members of the leadership team. And if they asked me, uh, if they would like me to come back to help with these efforts since I had a broad background, knew, know most of the manufacturing processes. I'd assembled a good team at Solon who were very capable and it would allow the next engineering manager to take them to the next level. I accepted the position of senior staff engineer, Vance Manufacturing, April this year. Over the years, I've traveled the world while working at Canamel, Germany, Italy, Switzerland, Belgium, United Kingdom, Japan, China, and various locations throughout North America. As I was assigned new duties and responsibilities, I basically came into these projects with very little knowledge of the processor equipment. I had a lot of great team members and management who were willing to help me learn and grow. I eventually became project manager or project lead in many cases because of the training and traits I'd, I had developed in the Air Force. So let's talk about what military traits and skills the companies are looking for. Discipline. This isn't about punishment. This is the trait to do the right thing when nobody else is looking. This is ingrained into you in the first day of basic training and throughout your career. The ability to cross train and learn something new. As I talked about in the military, I learned how to be a crew chief. I worked changing jet engines. I worked I eventually learned how to do flight controls and things like that. That ability to learn something new, to get outside of your comfort zone, these are the types of things that companies are looking for. The ability to work under pressure. Failure is not an option. Nobody works better under pressure than a member of the armed forces. There's many times we get uh, moved up dates by our customers because they're in a situ situation that ability to work under pressure and do the right thing is 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 cute is 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 important. Punctuality, being on time or even early, completing tasks and assignments on time. And the old military saying is, uh, "Hurry up and wait." It's the same thing in in business. Being punctual, getting your tasks done on time, showing up for meetings on time is extremely important. Teamwork. The ability to work side by side with your fellow teammates and accomplish any tasks. Cross training and learning new skills also happens when you do teamwork. It's important to support the people and your brother's keeper when it comes to teamwork. 
safety, Ken Mel believes in 100%. We want you going home the same way to your families, the same condition you came into work earlier today. No other place is safety more important than the military. Work ethic, doing tasks correctly, mission readiness, doing whatever it takes to accomplish the mission, showing up for work on time and performing your job at the highest level. That displays a good work ethic. Ability to adapt and overcome. We all heard a saying, in it, any plan is only as good as the first contact with the enemy. Same type of principles hold true in business. You might have your day planned out by the time you come in, then pow, something happens. You have to adapt, overcome, and do the right thing. So leadership, the willingness to seek promotion to go above and beyond or take on new challenges. In the military, as you increase your rank, your responsibilities grow along with your accountability. And displaying leadership and having the ability to, do, to be a leader is an important trait. So you look at the skills that possible companies like Kenmo are looking for. Logistics, accounting and finance. The skilled trades, electrical, mechanical, hydraulic skills. All those skilled trades we're looking for. Machinist, supervisor and management. Engineering, including design of equipment to design of tooling. IT, and many of our career fields are skills that we are looking for within Kenamental. So what helped me be successful in Kenamo? Start off with leadership. From the start of my career, I was never afraid to step up and take on a challenge, or as one of my managers used to st state, an opportunity to excel. In many cases, I was transferred to a team or a department when a new product or process was being developed and it was in trouble of being, uh, being late or not completed. As stated previously, I, I knew very little or had no working knowledge of the process or product, but soon became a a part of the team I was assigned to and also became eventually a project lead or manager status and then became a subject expert matter. I, didn't be, I wasn't able to do that without having a great support mechanism and the willingness to ask questions. I'm not afraid to ask questions, admit that I don't know something or seek help from my team members. I progressed from electrical controls to developing software, mechanical design, hydraulics and pneumatic systems, machine and process design, and also being a specifier of what type of equipment we install our factories. I love that feeling of solving a problem and coming up with a solution that requires a lot of out-of-the-box thinking. I cherish the challenge. I would not be able to do this without the support of my fellow team members, supervisors, management skills, and the skills I learned while I was in the Air Force. That ability to work under pressure. In the Air Force, there was many times what we call a red ball, which meant that the airplane was about to sortie and there was an issue. You had a very small window to troubleshoot and repair the issue. The same type of scenarios occur within a business. A customer has a critical need for a product and did not plan accordingly to have enough stock or a spare, or they might have had something happen to the one, they, they crashed the tool and all that. You and your team have to make it happen and happen quickly. In some cases, I was sent to customer site or to one of our factories to address an issue and I cover a misapplication or error on behalf of their team or our team. Keeping calm and showing respect for others goes a long way to solving the problems. Punctuality goes out without saying in business. Showing for work on time, being on time with a project or shipment are important and show a strong character trait. It shows respect for your customers, your managers, and your fellow employees. Treat everyone the same from the custodian to the CEO. Their time is as valuable as yours. Discipline. It's important that people you work for trust you along with your management team. It goes back to folding your underwear in six inch squares and the hangers one inch apart, your rack made correctly, to following technical order manuals to repair an aircraft. Doing what, you're going to, doing, doing what you say you're going to do and holding yourself accountable, these traits are ingrained in basic training, have been a cornerstone in my career. I've been given a lot of responsibility and freedom to do my job at Kenmo because I showed that I hold myself to a higher standard of accountability and people know that I will do what is best for the business. When things aren't going the way, as plan, I speak directly and frankly about them. I don't try to sugarcoat it. I seek advice from others or give my opinion as to whether the objective is achievable or not. Safety, this is a given in business and military. You have to work safely, you have to look out for the safety of others. Whether it's how you handle your weapon or checking to ensure the ejection pins are installed on an aircraft or working on the flight deck of an aircraft carrier, safety plays an important role in your daily life. The same can be said for any business. We want all our team members going home 
the same way they can work. We, we encourage all team members to look out for potential safety issues and empower them to, empower them to stop an unsafe act. Work ethic. Once again, having a real strong work ethic, being accountable, coming to work, doing the things that you need to do, that is an important trait that helped me be successful. And an ability to adapt and overcome. You have to be able to think on your feet, to solve a pro customer's issue or address a problem to keep production flowing without instilling panic or showing distress. I've used this when something went wrong in a machine startup and I've had many failures. But as one of my vice presidents stated, if you're going to fail, fail fast, learn, and come up with a new solution. And I've been able to do that in a lot of different projects and a lot of different times in my career. And that's been helped make me successful. So page nine, in closing, remember, when you're doing your resumes, highlight the skills and traits you learned in the military. People want to know that you're disciplined. You're going to show up for work on time. You have the ability to adapt and overcome. You're going to be punctual. You can do all those great things. Manage your career. Nobody can help your career but yourself. Ask for training. Ask for opportunities to challenge yourself and step outside of your comfort zone. If you want to go on to get a, a degree, an advanced degree, make sure your manager, your supervisor knows that. If a new machine comes in or some type of project comes up that you want to be involved in, ask to be involved in it. Sure, you can come to work every day, do your job do all those things and have a good career, but if you ever want to grow, if you ever want to do anything, you got to manage your career. It's up to you. And be of service. Help your fellow team members complete a task or an assignment and make, help make them better. Help others learn a new skill, or if you happen to be in a position to provide them opportunities to attend training or attend a degree, support that. Become involved in your community. I work with local vocational technical schools to provide mock interviews, help students improve their resumes. I do this in the evenings with the kids. The Car and Bike Club I'm a member of holds charitable events to help local veterans associations and homeless vets, along with women's shelters and families struggling with illnesses and are benefactors of our show. In the end, you'll receive back more than you give to help to others. Help to others become better and the process you will grow too. So I'd like to thank you for your time and hopefully what I talked about is will be useful you to you in your future and good luck and hope you choose Kenna Metal. We want to be the employer choice for you. Cool. Jim, thank you so much for presenting a little bit about your uh, previous military career and specifically your time at Kenna Metal. Um, we will be obviously flooring questions in a moment and Jim can answer any questions that you may have. You can submit those via the, the chat box um, on your little control panel. Uh, we just wanted to kind of cover a few extra details in regards to veterans and Kenna Metal. So as we mentioned before, Kenna Metal is actively recruiting veterans. Many of the sites that, uh, that Kenna Metal hires for have uh, veterans recognition celebrations. Um, there's also a specific list of benefits that we want to mention and these are included but not limited to what you see in front of you. There's obviously a selectable medical, dental, eye care plans along with life insurance for you, spouse and children, 401k, retirement, PTO and holidays. In terms of talent development, and I know that Jim touched on this, there's obviously a lot of uh, support in terms of training, both technical and interpersonal. Uh, there's talent development, performance management, and succession planning, um, all supported by Kenna Middle if you are to join our uh, team. In terms of wor work environment, there's obviously staffing, qualified employees, organizational climate, leadership, uh, work-life balance, and team member event, uh, to name just a few of the, the benefits and support that are available for you if you were to become a Kenna Metal employee. We will be following up to all of you, um, our attendees and those that will be viewing this recording at a future date uh, with an email with the various links for you to be able to apply. Um, the first link will be specifically to our Kenna Metals page. Uh, you'll be able to click that and search the jobs based on job function, whatever you may be interested in from business, finance, manufacturing, engineering, etc. Uh, you'll be able to search via you know, full, part-time, contractor, intern time positions. You'll also be able to search by location, so your specific city 
and state, as well as globally if you're looking for uh, you know any opportunities abroad. Like we mentioned before, Kenna Metal obviously has operations all around the globe. Um, you'll be able to click on the specific job of interest to you and submit and prepare a resume directly online. Uh, for those of you not seeing any specific jobs you're interested in or uh, you know nothing that you want to apply for in the given moment but you still want to uh, keep in the loop about Kenna Metal and opportunities specifically for veterans, uh, we will be providing you this link as well um, and we wanted to invite you to join our Kenna Metal vet Veterans Talent Community. Um, this way we'll be able to follow up with you when new opportunities do present themselves. Uh, you'll obviously be given and provided information by our recruitment team. So we will be providing you these two links uh, with the follow-up as well as a recording for this event. Uh, but now we will move on to any questions. Uh, just to reiterate, you can submit those via the chat box um, and we will be taking the opportunity to answer some of your questions now. Great, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Hubert. And I do see that we do have our first question. Um, the first question is, what is the average years of service um, at Kenna Metal? Uh, Basically, I can speak for our factory here in Solon, Ohio. It's been around, the factory itself has been in place since 1988. We had two other locations, we've consolidated down. The average years of service right now is around 25 years of service. Yeah. So, and that's pretty typical for most of the Kenemo locations. We do have some new locations and new businesses we moved in. From a corporate perspective, I would feel it's probably in the 15 to 20 year range. Great, thank you. Uh, another question, uh, you talked about 100% safe. How is this accomplished at Kenna Metal? So 100% safe is a program to where basically we go out and we do job safety analysis on different activities out on the shop floor. We develop what's called, believe it or not, a pre-flight checklist. Whether you're, in, whether you're in an office area, you're running a machine out on the floor, you're a maintenance technician, you're working in a tool crib, you're doing other facilities, other th activities, there's a list of items that you have to look at. So typically, all Kenna Metal days start off with a safety briefing. Here's where we're at, look around you. When we do inter-company inter uh, meetings, we always ask who's a, who's a first responder trained in first aid, who knows CPR, but on the, on the shop floor in our offices, we have this checklist and ask you to look around. Is there anything on the floor you can trip on? Is your desk organized? Are there, are there any electrical hazards? Any other hazards you see, you identify them and you move and you basically get those things re prepared. Uh, our policy is if you're driving, it's hands free. If you can't be hands free, you have to pull over and get to a place where you can be safe. Uh, if there is an incident, that somebody would happen to get injured, we do a full-blown safety investigation because what we want to know is what caused it, what things led up to this type of issue, and how can we correct it. And these things are actually broadcast out across Canada worldwide so that other plants can look for similar type of scenarios and make improvements before somebody gets, in gets injured. We're really all about making sure our people are safe, they're healthy, and when they come to work, we're not putting them in any type of dangerous situations. Great, thank you. Another question came in, uh, what are some of the Canamental job titles that could be potentially transitional positions coming from the military? Uh, you can look at like maintenance technician, uh, engineering spots, there might be some for the officers out there. Uh, look at logistics too. I mean, there's, there's positions within logistics that can do that, and uh, basically, just go under your general titles of engineering, maintenance, and production worker, too. There's some, there's some skilled trades that fall underneath that in regards to machinist and all that that would fall under those general titles, which would be directly applicable to a military type of transition. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> um, another question. Um, there are a lot of locations listed on the career page. Are there a few key locations where those job titles mentioned earlier are most common. Probably the most prevalent is going to be Ohio, North Carolina, Tennessee, these places, even Pennsylvania, Alabama. These places typically have at least two to three factories, manufacturing locations in them. Uh, but you could pretty much do a general search across all of Canada Metal, or you can localize it down to a specific state. Great. 
Um, another question came in, um, were you or have you been able to connect with other veterans at Can Metal? In fact, about a year and a half, two years ago, uh, I started up uh, looking, going out and talking with the Navy for people uh, basically transitioning from the Navy and we hired two technicians for our maintenance department. One was a hydraulics troop on a Sikorsky helicopter, the other one was a machinist mate. At our factory we have what's called a wall of honor in regards to we asked any employee who was a veteran that has a spouse, a brother, a sister, a father, a cousin to bring in a picture of that person, list about what they're going on, what's going on, what, when they served, what branch, what rank they were and we actually put that up on our wall of honor within the uh, within our plant. Uh, there's quite a few when some of this announcement came out it was surprising how many people basically within Kennemel reached out to me. Many of them I knew there were veterans uh, and then other people were like I didn't realize you were in the Air Force. I was in 19, 1976 to 81 and there's a lot of communications. Once people, once people find out you're a vet it's, it's kind of like a brother and sisterhood like you had in the military. That's great. And um, another question, what is the most exciting project you've worked in during your time at Canmel? That's a great pro that's a great question. <laughs> Probably the, the most the most exciting and most challenging was doing the chemical vapor deposition project over in Shanghai. Uh, basically because the the time scale got compressed and there was a huge delay between when we actually built the equipment, shipped it over, and got it installed, then being over there and actually see the construction of the factory, and compared to like we would bring dump trucks or mixing trucks of cement in and all that, they had two little cement mixers and about 200 guys lined up with wheelbarrows dumping cement in for the floor, then conveying, and we had all the designs for all the safeties we needed in the building and things like that, and working with the, lo the local government and things like that to get that all started up. Not, not speaking Mandarin or anything like that, relying upon the translators and the employees who were hired that spoke English to work through and train the operators and do that thing and you got to see a different culture. I mean, it was one of those ones where it was exciting, it was challenging. I had plenty of challenges. Some have turned out really well and some of those we had to go back to the drawing board and basically rethink and come up with our solution. Great. Thank you. Um, another question what piece of advice would you give yourself in hindsight if you could speak to your younger self joining Canamental? Probably finish that electrical engineering degree out a lot sooner. <laughs> Basically, when that happened, I was, like I said, I was four credits away. I was attending evening and Saturday classes. Um, and basically, I got pulled into two huge projects, which was the um, centering standardization and, and then the Shanghai facility. Even though I tried to attend classes whenever I could, the professors weren't as lenient in regards if you missed a class you dropped a letter grade and things like that. So I probably have been a little more aggressive on my scheduling classes to get my degree and that might have helped me achieve a little bit higher level within the corporation but I'm quite happy where I'm at. I mm -hmm. love solving problems. I love doing going out and talking to people on the floor, learning how they do their job, and then coming up with a solution that uh, basically supports them and gives them a, a, a nice piece of equipment to work with. Great. And one more question. Um, <clears throat> being a disabled veteran with a Schedule A VOR with a BS engineering degree in the Pittsburgh PA area, what recommendations would you recommend to assist a veteran in gaining employment with Can Metal? So we have our we have a a, um, a rural campus is out in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, basically 40 miles east. Uh, there's usually engineering positions open there. I would go to the Can Metal website under careers and look for positions in Latrobe. Uh, typically, there's a, quite a few. And then basically submit a resume and also use the Canamel Talent Community for Veterans as a method to submit a resume. And uh, basically brag up what you've done in the military and go ahead and use that degree to your advantage. So we're always looking for talented people that can help grow this company. Great. Super. I don't see any other questions coming in. 
So we'll just wait a couple more seconds here and nothing. Okay, great. Well, thank you, Jim, and thank you for sharing your story and for your service, obviously, to this country and its people. Um, it's great to hear that, you know, Kennemental values our military and is open in providing opportunities and training. Clearly, your military experience served a major value in your success at Kennemental, and I really look forward in seeing more people like yourself join Kennemental. Um, so at this point, uh, we are at the end of today's webinar. I wanted to thank everybody for joining, and again, thank you, um, Jim and, and Hubert, for sharing your experiences and the information that you had during our presentation today. Um, again, like I mentioned at the very beginning of the call, this call has been recorded, and we will send that out so you can listen to the presentation again. Um, and also share it with your uh, networks. So at this time, I will be closing today's webinar. Again, thank you, everybody, and have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you.